the chopper plays an important role in phaco emulsification cataract surgery. Many variations of choppers have been developed, but they can be classified into two main categories. Depending on the technique for which they were developed, there are choppers with horizontal action and those with vertical action. The blunt tip choppers are designed to perform horizontal chopping. It shares a general structure with other choppers. It consists of a handle, and a distal portion with a tip that is 1.25 mm long to 2 embrace the lens equator and angled at 90 degree. The shape of the tip is blunt as it is designed for horizontal chopping. The very end of the tip is dull and olive shaped, to protect the capsular bag. The inner surface of the shaft is sharpened to cut the nucleus during the movement of the chopper toward the phaco tip, which is impaled in the center of the nucleus. The best description of the use of these choppers has been provided by Dr. Brain Kim. Stay with us to watch how to make best use of these blunt tip choppers while doing the horizontal chopping. This is the proper position of the chopper. When I go into the eye, you want to stay in the pronated position with your wrist and then you supinate your hand so that the chopper tip is facing you when you initiate the chop. So again, pronation, supination. I like to go in the eye, pronated, and just, just to show you, I'm going in with one hand, I'm sliding the chopper in the pronated position down into the epinuclear material underneath the anterior capsule, rotating my hand so that it's supinated now. This is the ready position for the chop maneuver. Just for illustration, I'm going back out, pronated, and then supinated back into the equator, and I'm in the ready position to initiate the chop. The phaco tip, again, it's within the anterior capsular opening, and I dive down into the epinuclear material, but I know that I'm outside of the endonucleus, but at the same level, I'm bringing the two instruments together in the center, and the chop is initiated without difficulty. The cross chop, the same maneuver of pronating and supinating, the wrist and then bringing the chopper into the middle and fracturing. This is another example. Again, I'm in the pronated position, going into the eye, sliding under the epinuclear material, rotating my hand. You see I'm nudging the lens just to prove to you that I am indeed in the equator. Because I'm in the equator, when I do that maneuver, the lens jiggles the lens moves in within the horizontal plane. If I'm on top of the lens, as I'm showing here, when I try to supinate my hand, all it does is cause the lens to tiddlywink, and it doesn't actually move horizontally. Again, I pronated my hand, I went out underneath the anterior capsule to the equator, and then I supinated. I'm going to do that again. After I clean up this epinuclear material with the phaco, again, pronated, slide it past the anterior capsule, supinated, the chopper tip again within the anterior capsule opening, bevel down into the epinuclear material but outside of the endonucleus, gliding the two pieces together, fracturing the endonucleus within that same horizontal plane. And again, just to reiterate, I am always bevel down with my phaco tip and you can see there's an angle to this uh, balanced uh, tip that allows me to hold the endonucleus. This is tripan blue stained eye for illustrative purposes. Again, I pronate and then glide underneath the anterior capsule and then supinate. You can clearly see because there's such a well dilated pupil that I am in the equator. I'm lifting the anterior capsular edge just to show you and I slid my chopper underneath it. Again, I'm protonating and supinating just to show you how easy and fluid the movements are. Again, I pronated to get under the anterior capsule, out to the equator, supinated my hand for the ready position. The chopper is sub-incisional, doing the same thing. They meet in the middle and fracture the endonucleus in half. The pronation and supination move is the same for the cross chop. And so this is a final illustration just to show that, hey, you don't have to see what you're doing because you know where you are. So again, push down the epinuclear material, get under the anterior capsule, glide out to the equator, supinate, and you're in position. You saw me nudge the lens just to show you that I am indeed in the equator because as I nudge, the lens moves within the horizontal plane 
If I was not in the proper position, the lens would be tilting or I would just simply be scratching the surface. So in summary, the chop maneuver involves keeping the wrist pronated so that the chopper tip is facing out into the periphery, push down a little bit into the epinuclear material and as you on the surface of the lens and as you slide out past the anterior capsule, you supinate your wrist so that the, the chopper then faces the phaco tip and this is the ready position to initiate the chop. You place the phaco tip bevel down underneath subincisionally into the epinuclear material, but again, outside the level of the endonucleus, you bring the two instruments together and you chop. The pronation and supination move to harness the lens at the level of the equator and bringing the chopper centrally, meeting the phaco tip in the middle and fracturing purely mechanically without any energy or vacuum is my fundamental technique. I hope you liked the video. Feel free to share your views on this issue in the comment section. Check the description for similar videos and product links.